Is buying more than one dental practice Nacho Nuts? This is Paul, Dr. Nacho Goodman, failed NBA superstar, but the coach of the Dental Nachos Transition Basketball Panel. I put together my amazing friends and sponsors and speakers to share with you how to increase success and decrease stress in your quest to be a multiple dental practice owner. We will also share with you best practices for not crying inside in buying your first dental practice as well. So we're going to meet this panel here in just a minute. If you're watching it on Zoom and you have a question, please put it in the Q&A. If you're watching in on Facebook, put it in the comments and my team will bring that to life for me. The Transitions Basketball Panel will be at our Level Up Your Clinical and Career Success event in Center City, Philadelphia with the amazing Dr. Lincoln Harris to join that event as an in-person guest, just text LINK to 215-543-6454. So my first, the point guard, we'll call him, of the basketball transition panel, Jared Duckett of Duckett Lad. You're welcome to start your video, Jared. And we're going to dig in with you. But before we dig in with you, I want to thank you for being part of this panel, being an awesome supporter sponsor. You're going to be in Philadelphia hunting down nachos and edamame dumplings. But before we start, explain to the audience here, it's a different sport golf. What's the difference between a course person and a tent person at the U.S. Open? Yeah, a big key difference. I mean, that the, the tent person at the U.S. Open just likes the amenities, right? Yeah. They like the AC. They like that uh, bathroom that's handy. But I mean, a real, this is the thing, Paul, like a real, real sports fan, you know, is the course person. You got to be the course person because I want to be the guy where, you know, they're teeing off and I, and I just feel the energy, right? I want to be right behind that guy that hits that divot and the, the dirt just goes right on me. That's the true sports fan, Paul. Well, I like to be a fake sports fan, be as close to the old fashions as possible. We went with our good friend, Jim Cashmar, to the U.S. Open. Jarrett went on the course. I stayed in the tent the entire time with air conditioning, cookies, old fashions. I don't know why you did that, Jared, but I'm glad. Thank you for clearing that up. So our first question here, Jared, is on this basketball team, what do you do to help Dennis increase success and decrease stress, especially if you could highlight as a multiple practice owner? Yeah, I mean, first off, you called me the point guard. Totally <laughs> wrong. I mean, I, I used to be a point guard, but I don't have any handles. So I'd get okay. stolen from two times. They'd be like, duck it into <laughs> yeah. the bench, buddy. But no, where we jump in on multiple practice ownership is really just let the dental practice owner understand the numbers in their practice. Because what we see them for the most part is you got multiple practice owners. And as you add multiple practices, it adds multiple headaches typically, right? And if you don't have the headaches figured out on the first one, you're just adding to it. And so really what we dive in and do is say, hey, what are, what are you guys looking at? What are the numbers in this practice? What are the numbers in this practice? What are the numbers in this practice? Because if you don't see everything else, you know, classed out, then you can't really dissect and say, hey, this is off here. You can't pinpoint the problem to figure out what you need to fix if you're not looking at that stuff under the hood. So that's where our team jumps in and really helps people understand the numbers, profitability, EBITDA, all that fun stuff, and just how to get better in general. That so way. the dental-focused accountant, the point guard, this is my favorite player, Maurice Cheeks. I don't know if Mike Brandon Hill will comment. Maurice Cheeks, Hall of Famer, who would assist people like Dr. J, Moses Malone, in getting better. Now, what I want to talk about next is the most important KPI of any dental practice owner, but especially multiple practice owners. Is it EBITDA? No, not EBITDA. Is it number of new patients? No, it's not that. It is the number of times you see eye a day. And that's cry inside a day. Because we're dentists, Jared. That's where we have to keep our crying. Keep your sweating on the outside, you're crying on the inside. So I know you've gotten calls from your clients because you're a trusted advisor. What are some things you've seen multiple practice owners do they could be self-inflicted or non-self-inflicted wounds that have caused them to cry inside. Yeah, I'm going to go back to kind of what I said the first time. It's it's not looking at everything split out, right? A perfect example. I had a call the other day, client, um, five five or six practices, you know, and it's just bringing them on, right? Five or six practices. Here we go with EBITDA, but EBITDA roughly around, let's say, 19, 19%, give or take. You know, but they don't know where what they can improve. One practice might be making up 30% or so of the collections, and that practice might be really, really good, but the other three are kind of bringing them down, right? Right. And unless they're looking at that, they don't know where they need to pinpoint. Maybe this practice is good. It's running 25% EBITDA, and it's really, really good. 
go, we need to concentrate over here. Does it make sense even to keep maybe one of these? Right. Or can you kind of get rid of them? It's going to make everything else better, right? Hey, so that's why I be dragging down your evening. So oh, I might yeah. as well do it. I might as well do it. I'm going to ask you to describe love. No, just joking. Describe EBITDA. What does EBITDA mean to you? But I'm in the city of Philadelphia. We're hosting us here. Denzel Washington said in the movie Philadelphia, one of the best movies ever, explain it to me like I'm a four-year-old. So if someone pops on right now and says, I've heard the term EBITDA used so many times, I've understood it none times. Jared Duckett, what does EBITDA mean to you? Yeah. EBITDA is basically, it's a fancy way of saying, I'm going to go through the acronym. EBITDA is if you are an investor, if you're going to buy, go in and buy that practice and have a dentist run it, what are you going to make as the investor, as the owner, after you're paying, I'm going to use a one doc practice, that doctor, a reasonable salary. Gotcha. That's what EBITDA is. A lot of one doc practices get confused and think that they're net. Is there EBITDA? It's not. Right. You have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. And I will say this, this is, and that goes into this question too, especially as multiple doc or multiple practice owners, they're, they're looking to keep acquiring practices. A lot of people get really, really confused and think that EBITDA is, is basically free cash flow, right? but it's really, really not because you're buying that practice most of the time, leveraging that with debt, right? EBITDA is the free cash flow before debt and all that other stuff, right? Yeah. And so it's not the same as, oh, I'm going to buy this practice and make 20% EBITDA. Well, you got to pay for that practice as well if you're going to lever it. So a little misnomer there a lot of times. I like that. Good, a good explanation. I think that's one that can be confusing in an easy way. And sometimes when you hear things like my practice has 42% EBITDA, many times <laughs> they're talking about total net profit. Most of the time that's what I, and, and I mean, you know, we can talk with all the panelists here and, you know, DSOs or group practices who are doing well, their EBITDA in the 10 to 25% range is probably, is that, a, is that a most often range you see for practices operating well? Yeah, I, I like to use just average, you know, look, go to the 20%. You know, of course, yeah. there's going to be some lower, some higher, but 20% is kind of that ballpark I like to, uh, I like to kind of just look at right off the bat. Awesome. Now, my our message here, I was a big fan of Hamilton, the, move, the, the play, cry less, smile more. That is what the Transitions basketball team is here for. A message of inspiration, motivation, responsibility. If someone is watching this, someone's sitting here thinking, I want to own multiple practices or I own multiple practices. I'm not sure if it's going well. What's a message you would like to send to them? Yeah, I think the, the message I would like to say, I'm going to steal a, uh, there's a book out there called The Who, Not the How, right? It's, it's a strategic coach book, Dan Sullivan. When you're scaling and when you're going from one to two to three, or maybe you've got three and you want to go to 10, it's very easy to say, hey, I'm going to go do this. Uh, how am I going to do it? Because yeah. as, as dentists, they put a lot on their shoulders, right? And they're all thinking, well, I can do this and I can do that. To scale, you can't think how, because you're going to wear too many different hats. Right. To scale, to go from one to three, you have to think who, meaning if I'm going to go from one to three, not after I buy these, how am I going to get them? Or how am I, how am I going to acquire them? Or how am I going to get them doing? Who is going to be able to help me get there? That's the key. You have to leverage people around you. Maybe that's hire an additional team member. Maybe that's hire a panel of individuals around you, a board of directors, that sort of thing. That's going to allow you to scale quicker and with less crying, to be honest with you. Because I love that. I'm going to add to that. You know, one of my team members said that's, you know, dentists make interesting plans like Dennis Job Connect, DennisJobConnect.com. We connect associates. They go, people reach out to me and say, this, Paul, I bought a third practice. I go, oh, Who's the dentist who's going to work there? They go, I don't know. I go, I think that would have been important before you signed, as we meet April 20th, the asset purchase agreement. I mean, the figure it out later can cause a lot of crying inside. The smile more, I love that. The who, not the how, building your team. When a restaurant, a successful restaurant group opens up another location, they don't open it up, put the tables in, invite people to come and then say, oh, maybe we should get a chef for this place. So I think <laughs> that's a really key point. Well, Jared, we're so glad to have you as part of this. This is how people can reach out to you. You can email Jared to salsa at dentalnachos.com. Um, we will connect you with Jared, key resource and sponsor. But just for the video and the audio, how could people go directly to your website? Yeah, best way to get a hold of us, go to our website, ducketlad.com, two T's, two D's. Um, click the work together form, meet with one of the individuals on our sales team. We love talking to dentists every single day. So I'd love to chat with you. Awesome. And you're coming to Philadelphia. What are you most looking forward to eating when you're here? Cheese man, steak. I, I tell you what, I go back to those dumplings, man. They're yeah. just dynamite, something that just you, you won't forget them. Once you eat them, you'll never 
forget the taste. Well, man. I want to tell you, uh, studies show calories don't count when you're here in Philadelphia for CE. So that's what I heard, dude. I'm carving up too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, Jared. Thanks so much for being part of this. Yeah, man.